Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Second Battle of Galveston, located in Galveston County, Texas, on January 1st, 1863. Upon his promotion as commander of the Texas Confederate forces in November of 1862, Confederate Major General John B. Magruder put into place plans to recapture Galveston and to make up for Confederate Colonel Joseph J. Cook's failure to hold it. The plan was for the Confederate infantry to attack by land, while the Confederate ships attacked by sea. On the morning of January 1, 1863, four Confederate ships consisting of two Confederate steamboats and two cotton-clad ships, the C.S. Bayou City and the C.S. Neptune, under the command of Confederate Colonel Thomas Green, approached Galveston from the sea. The cotton-clad warships are new to the series. The bigger ships, called ironclads, were ships that were lined in iron, thus making them far more resistant to fire. The Confederacy did not have the resources for iron, so they came up with something not quite as good but better than nothing, the cotton-clad warship. This is a wooden ship that is protected from enemy fire by bales of cotton lining its side. This is actually more effective than you would think. The cotton bales would absorb cannon and rifle fire for a time, allowing the cotton-clad ships to get close and use infantry rifle fire to fire back. The Confederate infantry attacked the Union infantry's regiments consisting of three companies of the 42nd Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry Regiment, under the command of Union Colonel Isaac S. Burrell. The battle was mostly decided by the ships as the Confederate ships met with and fought six Union ships consisting of the USS Clifton, USS Corpheus, USS Harriet Lane, USS Awasco, and USS Sackham, all under the command of Union Commander William B. Renshaw and his ship, the USS Westfield. The Confederate forces were outnumbered three to one and the battle was fairly short and fierce. The CSS Neptune was sunk by the Union ships, while the CSS Bayou City was successful in capturing the USS Harriet Lane. However, things did not go well for the Union. During this battle, the USS Westfield, along with Union Navy Commander Renshaw, ran aground of the sandbar. Confederate Commander Magruder called for a three-hour truce as he tried to arrange negotiations of a surrender. Renshaw, refusing a surrender, attempted to scuttle the Westfield and prevent it from falling into Confederate hands. Unfortunately, as they attempted to sabotage their own ship, they accidentally blew up their own gunpowder, resulting in the death of Renshaw and several of his men. The rest of the Union fleet fled to harbor, but the Union infantry saw the explosion of the Westfield and immediately surrendered to the Confederate forces. Estimated losses were 600 Union soldiers killed, wounded, and missing. This included 420 infantry captured and killed, and the crew of one gunboat captured, the Harriet Lane, and one gunboat destroyed, the Westfield. Confederate losses were much smaller with less than 150 men killed, wounded, and missing, including 26 men killed and 117 wounded and one ship, the SS Neptune, sunk. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.